With its unique cartoon art style and absolutely massive range of weapons, it didn't take me long to become a fan of Borderlands. There has been four main games released over the years and each game also comes with a healthy amount of DLC. In today's video we're going to take a look back at the DLC that was released in the first Borderlands game and find out which was the best. If you liked the video make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Borderlands series is at the near top of my list for my favourite games of all time and for good reason too. I had a lot of fun for the most part playing the DLC for Borderlands 1 and in this video I'm going to rank them from worst to best, starting with the worst. Coming in at 4th place has to be Mad Mox's Underdome Riot without a doubt. I don't want to sound dramatic but not only is this DLC the worst Borderlands add-on content I've ever played, but I'd go as far as saying it's the worst DLC I've ever come across. The story behind it isn't particularly interesting, and this DLC is the king of repetitiveness. The aim of the game is to fight your way through waves of enemies until you get to the final wave and have defeated everyone. As you progress through the rounds, enemies get much stronger and more variables are implemented, such as shotguns dealing more damage or players having no shields. I felt variables being included during the waves was a good idea as it brought an element of uniqueness and made it feel different to the circles of slaughter. Sadly though, that's the only positive I have to say about this DLC. The first mission is to complete all rounds in three small coliseums and each coliseum had five rounds and each round has five waves. This is extremely time consuming, repetitive and can be frustrating as there is no save option and if you were to die you get knocked down a ton of waves. If you have the patience to finish and complete all of the small coliseums, you then move on to the larger coliseums and have to do the exact same again but it's harder and takes much much longer. For a game that's all about loot, I have no idea why you don't get any during this DLC. If enemies dropped loot or you got some loot after finishing each coliseum, it might be worth your time but I refused to spend countless frustrating hours playing this DLC. I was extremely disappointed with this DLC, so for that reason, it comes in at number 4. This was a really tough decision, but in 3rd place is the Zombie Island of Dr. Ned, which was the first DLC released for Borderlands 1. The first thing I noticed and liked about the game was the island it was set on. I thought the colours that we used were really nice and it was so different to all the other locations throughout the game. The island is filled with zombies and they don't carry guns but they do charge at you in huge numbers and some have special abilities you need to watch out for. I felt it had a strong enough story with a decent amount of main story and side quests that kept me entertained for a few hours. I just wish there were a few more quests but that can be said for all of the DLC that was released for Borderlands 1. It was nice to get off of Pandora and explore a new and detailed island, but I was disappointed with the loot. Throughout my whole gameplay of this DLC, I can't remember picking up any decent loot. And just like the Underdome DLC, it's really disappointing when a game that is all about looting doesn't deliver any loot. Nevertheless, I really enjoyed this DLC. Having zombies charging at you in huge hordes was a nice new challenge and it was different to the rest of the game. The secret armoury of General Knox has managed to get to second place on this list and for good reason. This DLC starts you off at T-Bone Junction which is a tiny town in the middle of a highway. The only thing I didn't like about this DLC is that you have to drive a good distance on a one way road to get to your location. There's a few enemies along the way but the drive is still pretty boring. There's a couple of new vehicles added into the game, one of which is a huge car that holds up to 4 players which is fun to use in fights but not so fun when you're driving around as it's extremely slow. There are still loads of enemies to fight and kill and a couple of new ones added into the game which is exactly what you expect from a DLC. There wasn't a ridiculous amount of new enemies but enough to keep the game fresh. I think the secret armoury of General Knox probably has the best ending boss fight out of the four DLCs and arguably the best loot as well. 
After defeating the final boss, you can access his secret armory and get an unbelievable amount of loot. And for me, that's what Borderlands is about. So for that reason, this is second on this list. Claptrap's Robot Revolution takes first place on this list. It was the fourth and final DLC released for Borderlands 1, and it was absolutely amazing. It had an entertaining story with great humour added in throughout the whole journey. I thought the final boss fight was boring and all I had to do to defeat it was hide behind a rock and wait until it was safe to come out, but it was still fun. The rewards you get for beating the final boss are incredible. You get an absolute ton of loot and that for me is what makes Borderlands a great game. I like the way you fight against previously defeated bodies from earlier on in the game as Rogue Claptrap uses them as traps. There isn't much of a new map design, but whatever was new looked really nice. Like all of the DLCs, I feel that even if you explore every location and finish every quest, you still don't have that much game time, which was disappointing. But other than that, I really enjoyed playing through Claptrap's Robot Revolution, and I think it was the best of the four DLCs that were released for Borderlands 1.